G'day everybody, Nick Dingler here again with another C-sharp tutorial, this time around looking at variables, specifically what they are, how to use them, and what you can do with them. If you already are a little bit acquainted with variables, I suggest go to the next video where I'm going to delve into it a little bit more advanced. But for right now, let's get into the video. I've already created my project, okay? It's just a simple console application called variables, and I'll probably suggest you do the same and join this ride with me. So the one thing you need to remember when you're doing this is computers were invented by nerds, okay? And the one thing that nerds absolutely love is algebra. And if you've ever done high school maths, you would have seen something like this, okay? What you're seeing here are three independent little variables. That's what these letters are called. And the reason that we call these variables is that the values inside them can change, they vary depending on how you use it. And they're actually really good. They're very powerful because you can write a whole equation with a variable and you can replace it with a different number each time you run it to get the result you need. Okay, that's why algebra is so bloody good. And that's exactly what variables are in programming languages. However, we actually get the opportunity to use them a little bit better than that, not just with numbers, but with words and trues and falses. And you can go all the way up the spectrum to things with images and videos. Okay, it can get pretty advanced. But for right now, let's create our own variable. And the way that you do that is simply by writing three little letters, V-A-R. You can see where they come from. You then follow V-A-R with the name of your variable. Every variable has to have a name, very similar to this one. So let's just start with A. And then you have to go equals a value. And I'm just gonna put 15 in for the moment. Put a semicolon in. And what you've just told C-sharp then is I want to create a variable, I want to declare a variable as the actual language, called A, and I want it to be the value of 15. Simple as that, okay? What can you do with a variable? Well, the first and most simplest thing you can do with a variable is put it on the screen. Now, you don't put quotes around it like I usually do. I usually write quotes A and things like that. I'm just gonna put my read key in there quickly. But what that's actually going to do is that's going to print the letter A to the screen. I don't want the letter A. I want what A is. And okay, that's probably a confusing sentence. So I'm going to say it a different way. I want the value of A, which is actually 15. So if I drop the quotes, C sharp suddenly knows that I'm talking about the variable and not the actual letter. And there you go. We've got 15 on the screen. So you might be asking, well, what about B and C and D? Well, if I type in B, I actually get myself a nice little error and it's saying that B doesn't actually exist and that's because I haven't got a line with var B equals something. All right. Now, I'm just going to quickly say, I'm going to take that back. A is a shocking name for a variable. There is very few instances where you should use variable names this short. You need to really describe what your variable is doing. Now, I'm going to use it and I'm going to change this variable name just nice and quickly and I'm going to give you a shortcut. I'm going to highlight A here and I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and double press the R button and I get this rename dialog and it's saying rename A. So it's saying I'm renaming my variable called A and I can tick all these boxes if I want to but I don't need to in this case. And I just type in the new name of my variable and you can see it's already reflected down the bottom there in the right line. If I hit apply, it's automatically changed every single instance of my variable to num. It hasn't changed any way that my code works just the name of the variable has changed, okay? And this is a good opportunity for me to talk about the rules of variable names, okay? Just quick ones. So, firstly, they must start with an underscore or a letter, must, okay? They then can be followed by, so followed by an underscore, a letter, or a number, okay? You cannot have special characters, spaces, or anything similar to that effect. Underscores, letters, and numbers are what you need to stick to. You can use lowercase and uppercase letters. It's very good practice though to have variables with lowercase at the beginning, okay? And I'll get to why I stress at the beginning later on. Let's make some more variables. So if I want, let's say, somebody's name, I simply go var again, type the name of my variable, and in this case, I'm gonna put somebody's name inside of it, equals, and in quotes, a name. Okay, and then let's do another one. Let's do good old pi one four one five six five semicolon. Okay, so I've just created three variables 
and they've all got different bits of data in them. We've got 15, which is a number, obviously, a whole number. A string, which is just a word or a sentence, like we've used in our right lines. That's why it's got quotes around it. And then we've got a fractional value going inside of pi. And these all act the same way. So we can print each one to the screen. As simple as that. Okay. Now, what if I don't want it to just say num, name, and pi, like the actual values? What if I want a sentence that follows it? So what if I want something like my number is, and then put num after it? Okay, well, the first way you can do that is simply by writing your sentence first, my number is, space, and then put a plus in between what you want to write on the screen and the number that appears. So if I run that now, my number is 15 okay now there is another way you can do this which I actually prefer personally okay do a very similar thing I'm gonna go my name is and I'm just gonna leave it as name in there and I'm actually gonna put the quotes on the other side which is gonna be stupid it's gonna say my name is name but what we can do put a dollar sign on the front of the string and what this tells C sharp is to expect variables inside my quotes and then what you do is you just surround the variable in squiggly brackets, run it, and you can see it's replaced this bit name with the value of my variable called name. Okay, that might be a little bit confusing. I've used the word name a few too many times. But this is one of the best things I think that Microsoft have ever developed. It's so freaking easy to use. Okay. Now, let's say I want to do something a little bit different for pi. Let's say I want to triple the value of pi, but I don't want to save the tripled value. Like for example, if I triple it, it's going to be 9.3 something, okay? Or 9.4 something. But I don't want to actually save that value. I just want to see the tripled value, but I don't want to lose the original, okay? You just simply do a tiny bit of maths in the brackets. And all this is doing is it's going to triple pi and then print it on the screen but it's not actually going to change what pi is if i run it you see we get a nice quick value there now it is worth noting i sort of didn't touch on this just then but if i was to change a variable let's say i've already made num and put the number 15 inside of it if i was to then say go num equals 25 notice i haven't got var on the front that's because you only need to do that once at the beginning if I go num equals 25, you see it's updated my variable and we've actually effectively removed 15 from my program. It's gone. Okay, 25 has gone inside of number and it's kicked out 15. He's nowhere to be found anymore. Okay, so what is all this about? Okay, you can actually do a lot of maths. You can do a lot of things. And when we get to interacting with the user, you can start making some very interactive, cool programs. Okay. But for right now, I think that's probably the easiest way to sign it off. And in the next video, I'm going to delve into a lot more detail about variables, okay, and more specifics. But thank you very much for watching, everybody. I'd like you to think about liking, commenting, or even subscribing if you'd like to. But I'll see you in the next video where we're going to talk more and more about variables. See you then.